Hello, William here again and welcome to this part two of uh, my video on turning wet sycamore. Now, just to recap on uh, part one, if you missed it, I recently acquired uh, more or less a whole sycamore tree. Um, but while I was milling it and cutting it up uh, to be stored and seasoned, I decided to have a bash at turning a couple of pieces uh, wet. Now, I decided to turn two pieces. One was going to be quite a large hollow form, which turned out to be about uh, an almost a sphere about eight inches in diameter. And the other one was uh, turned out to be rather an ugly end grain bowl. So all we have to do now then is to finish the hollow form. Now I rough turned this two weeks ago uh, and because the tree had only been down a couple of days uh, the moisture content was still showing around 28%. I rough turned it uh, quite thin, uh, thin, thinner than I would normally dare to about three eighths of an inch and it's been in a box of shavings with rice um, in the cavity for some of the time and the moisture content today is showing between 10 and 12 percent which is not bad and uh, certainly dry enough to finish. Okay then what's the plan? Uh, I'm going to put this back on the lathe. Um, if uh, it's not too much out of true I'm going to true it up a little bit. Um, I don't think there's any need to do any more scraper work on the inside just a bit of sanding to smooth it down and um, to, to think about the finish. Now I've looked online to see what people do when they finish these. The, the wood is way too bland to leave it. It's got a couple of interesting features, but by the t time um, they're sanded down, I don't think it's going to be very interesting. So it's begging for some colour. I've looked at various colour schemes and the autumnal colours and the earthy colours, and I've decided on blue. Now, my thought here is to um, sand this down to about... 400 grit um, to put on some fairly dark um, blue and then sand it right back so that the uh, there's only some legacy colours in the end grain and in the deeper pores and then to finish it with a lighter blue. I think that could look quite interesting. I've looked online and I don't see anybody else done a hollow form like that. So off we go then. So having mounted it back on the lathe, I can see that in fact it hasn't moved uh, too much. Um, this allows me to balance at least uh, the outside uh, using my big fat scraper. However, because I turned this quite thin, about uh, 3 eighths of an inch, it doesn't give me any leeway to uh, rebalance the inside. Now, having got the piece trued up and moving on to my most unfavourite aspect of wood turning, uh, abrasive work. Now, I'm going to work my way through the grits here from 180 to 400. Uh, not going any further than 400 because I uh, obviously intend to apply colour. Now, for the colour scheme, I was going to have another go at the concept of using a, a dark colour, uh, mostly sanded away as a background with a lighter colour over the top. The colour scheme that I've uh, decided to experiment with is the intrinsic colour midnight blue for the background and a mix of stone blue and white for the overcoat. Now, to apply these colours, I'm going to use an airbrush because of the size of the project. But before I start on that, I'm going to give the project a good clean with methylated spirits. So having got a good heavy layer of the midnight blue um, intrinsic colour, I need to leave this to dry now for uh, about 10 or 15 minutes. Now. As I mentioned, I'm going to sand away most of the uh, midnight blue colour, hopefully leaving some interesting highlights. I started off this abrasive process with 400 grit, 
but I pretty soon had to revert to 240 as it wasn't removing enough of the blue. One issue I've noticed uh, since I've been sanding back uh, colour on a few projects like this is annular banding. I'm not too sure what causes this but an easy way to get rid of it is to sand uh, in the opposite direction by hand. So once I got that nicely sanded back and cleaned off using the airbrush it's time to put on the top coat which is a 50-50 mix of the intrinsic colours stone blue and white. I was given this colour scheme by one of our lady wood turners uh, some time ago I and mean, I cannot remember for the life of me which one but it does come out a very nice powder blue. So I'm going to sand back the powder blue now with 400 grit which will optimistically uh, reveal a rather mottled effect. Again I'm finishing off the process here sanding by hand to remove those annoying bands that keep appearing. Next stage then is to apply some pre-thinned sanding sealer which will uh, start the process for providing my finish and also help uh, pop the colours. Okay, after four coats of a pre-thinned sanding sealer and a denibbing, we are into the Yorkshire grit and the Yorkshire grit microfine routine. Having completed the Yorkshire grit routine, moving on to Hampshire Sheen high gloss uh, using the hot air gun method. Having given it a good buffing, I finally added a top coat of Hampshire Sheen microcrystalline wax, which gives it that nice, harder, more durable finish. Time now then to part it off and as usual I haven't given myself much room to play with uh, so it's not long before I resort to the gentleman saw to finish parting it off. Finally then just to sand off the nub at the bottom and to finish it with some sanding sealer to make it look pretty. Okay, so there we have it. Big blue. Um, has it turned out the way I expected? Not really. I was expecting to see some much darker patches and a more sky blue effect. Um, I don't really have time to do it again. I think the most important thing uh, I've demonstrated here that it's possible to turn green wood and finish it within two weeks. Um, as I mentioned before, this sycamore tree uh, which was a healthy tree, was felled uh, two weeks and two days ago and um, it's dried down to 11-12% uh, which was enough to allow me to finish it. I think if I'd had more time I would have stripped the colour off and tried some different combinations of colours but um, because it went out of true a little bit and I had to rebalance it the walls are getting perilously thin and I couldn't afford to lose uh, too much of, more of the wall thickness. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, second part of the uh, video and I hope to see you again next week.